Lecture 5 and the last lecture, Cleaning and Disinfection and Food Safety Legislation. The aim of this unit is to emphasise the importance of working in a clean environment and to raise awareness of the relevant legislation. By the end of this unit you should be able to define and give examples of clean as you go and scheduled cleaning, demonstrate an understanding of the uses of cleaning and disinfection chemicals, have an appreciation of cleaner procedures of premises, equipment and utensils and finally recognise your personal legal responsibilities as food handlers. The definition of cleaning is the application of energy to a surface to remove dirt and grease and grime. And the product we use for cleaning is a detergent. A detergent is a chemical used to remove dirt, grease and food particles it does not and is meant not to kill bacteria. The nice thing to look at are disinfectants. The definition of a disinfectant, it reduces bacteria to a safe level. And there are three types of disinfectant. There are chemical disinfectants such as bleach, steam and water at 82 degrees Celsius or above. There are only two types of surfaces requiring disinfection as food contact surfaces and hand contact surfaces. Food contact surfaces include knives, tongs, other utensils, slicers, mincers, mixers, food containers, chopping boards, work surfaces, production belts. Hand contact surfaces including things like handles of doors, fridges, freezers, cupboards and utensils and also taps and switches. Something else you need to disinfect as well are all your cleaning materials and equipment. Something else you might use in your workplace is a sanitizer. Now this is a combined detergent and disinfectant. It's very food safe in as much as it won't taint. It's not toxic, it's got no taste and it's very cost effective. In fact you can probably buy 5 litres of sanitizer, concentrated sanitizer for about £10 and this product is very heavily diluted with water and you need to use it. Sometimes 1 in 50 to 1 in 100 parts water. So you can see it's very cost effective and in fact 5 litres will give you about 500 litres of diluted product. Sterilising is the process of destroying all microorganisms and their spores which in reality is quite difficult to achieve. We can achieve it in the canning industry by cooking the product to 121 degrees Celsius for 3 minutes or more, called the botulinum cook, which will kill Clostridium botulinum spores. But the term is quite often misquoted and misused. When people say sterilising, they sometimes mean disinfected, which is totally different. Disinfection reduces bacteria to a safe level. It doesn't kill spores. As an example of the misuse of sterilising, You'll sometimes see double sink dishwashing in places like school canteens where one sink contains a detergent and a second sink, which is sometimes called a sterilising sink, contains very hot water above 82 degrees Celsius. This in fact is a disinfecting sink, not a sterilising sink. Cleaning presents its own set of hazards, including such things as cross-contamination, perhaps using the same cloth in a dirty area and then taking it into a clean area, chemical contamination from the product that you're using to clean, physical contamination from brush bristles, mop filaments, bits of cloth, failure to destroy pathogens, perhaps the disinfectant you're using is out of date, um, that's very important, all disinfectants need to be in date when you use them because they do degrade over a period of time and so in effect they become ineffective. So the failure could be to the product being out of date, it could be stale, perhaps you've been using it all day without change, perhaps it's too strong, too concentrated, perhaps it's too dilute. Also tainting, again from strong odoured cleaning products. Hot water, chemicals and physical energy must be used to clean and the chemicals or chemical should be a detergent, a neutral detergent. There are two types of cleaning. One is clean as you go, which does what it says on the can. Clean up after yourself there and then. Don't leave anything for anybody else to clean up after you. It's not a documented procedure. It's something 
as you do as a method of good housekeeping practices. So the first of the two types of cleaning is clean as you go. The second type of cleaning is scheduled cleaning. This is where cleaning is planned. So where cleaning is planned, it's called scheduled cleaning. And that schedule is a documented procedure which must be retained and kept up to date under your food safety management system. The schedule itself stipulates several areas. First of all, what needs to be cleaned? Who cleans it? So there's room on the document for the person to sign to say that they have undertaken the cleaning. When does it need to be cleaned? How is it going to be cleaned? The type and amount of cleaner. The time, the contact time of the chemical. Safety, i.e. personal protective equipment. What you should wear when you're using the chemical. And this needs to be checked and recorded by a supervisor or line manager. And just a quick word on cloths. Cloths are a common source of contamination. So single use disposable cloths are recommended rather than reusable cloths, which could cause cross-contamination. We are now going to look at six stage cleaning and disinfection. First of all, we start off with a pre-clean, which is the initial removal of any food accumulations, any dirt, any debris. Secondly, the main clean. And the main clean we can undertake with a detergent. Now what a detergent does is to bring all the food debris, the grease and the dirt, into solution form, ready for the third part of the process which is the rinse. So the rinse takes away the solution which contains all the dirt and food debris. The fourth part of the process is disinfection. You've now removed the biofilms, the dirt, the grease and the grime so that a disinfectant can now do its job of reducing bacteria to a safe level. It's very important that you always clean before you disinfect. Do not disinfect first because a disinfectant will not get under the biofilms or the grease films in order to kill the bacteria. So the fifth stage is the final rinse. Because the disinfectant we are using is a chemical disinfectant, we don't want to leave any chemical residues behind. So the final rinse takes away those residues. And lastly, air dry and storing to prevent contamination. Do not dry using tea towels or paper towels because that could reintroduce contamination. There's also a four stage cleaning and sanitizing procedure. Again, we start off with a pre clean, the initial removal of any food accumulations, any dirt and grease. Secondly, we now sanitize. Now, as already mentioned, a sanitizer does the job of a detergent and disinfectant. So it's cleaning and reducing bacteria to a safe level all in one go. Because we are using a chemical sanitizer, we don't want to leave any chemical residues. So what we do then, we introduce a rinse stage to rinse off that sanitizer. And lastly, we air dry and store in to prevent contamination. Ideally, in a food premises, you should have three types of washing facilities. Hand wash facilities, food wash facilities, and equipment wash facilities. You must, by law, have hand wash facilities. As far as food and equipment wash facilities go, you can combine the two operations, but if you do, you must separate the operations with a disinfectant phase. 